So during our trips, when we asked the locals what human rights are, most of them were immediately saying rights to survival, development, health, education, safety, healthcare. But when we talked to some foreigners, they brought up freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of religion. So is it the case that the Chinese people are more practical? You have to think about it. China was just so dirt poor, you know, 30, 40 years ago that culturally Chinese tended to be a lot more practical um, at that stage. Second, I think a large part of it comes to American and Western European propaganda. You know, every time you see a politician stand up, they say, we need to preserve our democracy. The, the bedstone of our liberal democracy is freedom of speech. It's propaganda, right? I actually find the United States, you know, terms like American exceptionalism, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, you know, eating hot dogs on July 4th. The United States probably employs propaganda more than any other nation in the world today. And so I think culturally it's been so ingrained in a lot of foreigners that freedom of speech, the ability to vote, defines human rights. David, would you agree? Well, I think both kinds of freedoms are important. Uh, economic freedom, the, the freedom to build up a business or to freedom to build a better life, that's, that's very important. I also think the ability to feel like your voice is heard and to speak, that's important too. So I, I don't think you can compromise on either of them. Would you like to have freedom first or a better life? I think they go together and they actually reinforce each other. Okay, and I, I'm gonna disagree with David on this. I don't think uh, freedom of speech is much use if you don't have anything to eat, if you can't walk on the street, if you have no hope, you don't, can't, you don't have a job, and your, your children are starving. I think the ability for people to think fairly freely is important to having a dynamic economy. One thing we've seen at the local level in China, in particular, what we tell on these trips, is that a lot of people believe they can make their voice heard in the things that matter most to them directly. But my point was that you cannot start talking about uh, esoteric freedoms and the choices when you don't have anything to eat. The reason we disagree on this is that here, having a cacophony of voices does not solve anything. Having a voter box does not solve anything by itself. It's the attitudes of the people, their willingness to come together, sacrifice a little bit for the future rather than to pursue their own selfish aims. Or right now in the United States, you can say anything you want, and they do and it hasn't helped anything. We're more polarized than we've ever been before.